What's up everybody? This is Derek Kirby from the Dallas Prospect. And today I wanna to take a look at a recent graphic that came out. I shared it on the channel in the community tab. You've probably already seen it. Here it is now. This is comparing Luka Doncic's current season, the 2019-2020 season, against Dirk Nowitzki's pretty much career highs. And the implication is, hey, has the kid already surpassed the franchise GOAT? Now, I have a little bit of an issue with this standpoint because by no means is anyone trying to say Luka has accomplished more than Dirk. No way. But the implication is that he is operating at a level that the franchise, the Mavericks, have never seen before. And while his numbers in many categories are higher, the impact is not on the same level. So let's take a look at this today. Now, the first thing we wanna compare, I know that this graphic laid out Dirk's career highs, it spotlights points, field goals made per game. I don't care about field goals made per game. That's a stupid one to me anyway. Rebounds and assists. Well, that's nice, but that seems a little bit selective. So I wanted to take a look at Dirk's best, pretty much his best season. Now, you could say, hey, in 2005, 2006, his numbers were actually higher in some of these categories than his MVP season the following year, 2006, 2007. But Dirk does, in his MVP season, capture the coveted 50, 40, 90 club designation. So I wanted to keep my focus on his MVP season because that is the one where he kind of got really the recognition he so very much deserved at that point. Now, it took longer for that in other areas, but regardless, in Dirk's MVP season, he averaged 24.6 points per game. His career high was actually the year prior in which he averaged 26.6 points per game, although that was in heavier minutes. The 2006-07 Mavericks won 67 games and blew a lot of people out, and as such, Dirk didn't have to play as heavy of minutes. So I'm going to say while his MVP year is fewer points per game, it's still more efficient. In that, he averaged 8.9 boards per game, his career high for that. He had twice done 9.9 .9 rebounds per game. Never got 10 rebounds per game average for a season, but you know, it is what it is. Now on that, Dirk shot 50.2% from the field, 41.6% from beyond the arc, 90.4% at the charity stripe, and did it all on an effective field goal percentage of 52.9%. That is balling. That is absolutely playing out of your mind. So while it might not be in the points and rebounds department his best year from an efficiency standpoint, it's really you know easy to make the argument here that this was probably his best year. Now compare that to Luca in this current season, in which Luca falls outside of the top three in the MVP voting, although he is oddly getting consideration in the most improved player category. This season, with still a couple games left, Luca is averaging 29.6 points per game. Automatically blows out of the water anything in terms of points per game Dirk ever averaged. I'm not trying to insinuate that somehow 24.6 or even 26.6 is better actually than 29. So get that out of the way. 9.7 rebounds per game for Luka. That is better than Dirk's MVP year by almost a full rebound. It's just a hair under his career best mark, which he said a couple times at 9.9 .9 boards. But nevertheless, still quality production when you consider that Dirk's a seven footer and a power forward for most of his career. And Luka obviously has played everything from the point guard, shooting guard, even a little bit at times in the small forward in his rookie year. But generally, Luka runs as the point guard. So tremendous there, although Luka is also like 6'9", so 6'8", 6'9", so he's by no means a small guy. But still impressive rebounding from what is essentially labeled a guard. Now, assists, this was never going to be a competition. Dirk's career high mark in this is 3.5 assists. In his MVP year, he averaged 3.4 assists per game. Luka blows that the hell out of the water with nine assists per game. Now, in this season, from a efficiency standpoint, Luka is averaging, or excuse me, shooting 46.3% from the field, only 31.6% from beyond the arc. It's actually worse 
than his rookie year. And we talked in his rookie year about how his three-point percentage tanked in the final like third of the season. He was shooting more around like 36% and it dropped uh, after that rough stretch when he kind of ran out of gas. It's It's been bad this year. He's, I think, too reliant on step backs. But regardless, 31.6% from three, a lot more three-point attempts per game than Dirk. Uh, at the charity stripe, 75.5%. Compare that to that split to Dirk's 50.2%, 41.6, and 90.4. As great as Luka is, I don't know that we will ever see him in an efficiency standpoint join Dirk in that 50, 40, 90 club. That is such unreal, rare territory. I can't remember the last guy who did it, but Dirk did it, Nash did it. Dirk almost did it a second time, in fact, several years later, which is incredible. But it's really difficult to achieve that. And it's basically when you are in peak form. Now, Luka's effective field goal percentage is, in fact, higher than Dirk's as well. 53.1%. So you look at that and you kind of question, like, well, how is it that across the board in all these different splits, he's actually shooting a lower field goal percentage, but then his effective field goal percentage comes out ahead of Dirk's. It is a, a bit of a, a mystery in that regard. Uh, I don't know the full science and everything they consider behind it. Dirk's being 52, almost 53%, and Luca just literally two-tenths of a point higher. But regardless, it's, it's a different era is the main thing to consider here. Like, as much as you want to focus perhaps on the splits and all that it's a different game in the modern age especially with the way the mavericks play it pretty much everything is a three-pointer or it's right at the rim that's luca as well luca is not a guy that operates in the mid-range he shoots phenomenally almost 70 percent around 70 percent when he gets to the bucket when he gets within a few feet of the basket he shoots a tremendous percentage like in the in the elite elite finishers right around the rim However, we talked earlier about his three-point percentage. He's, he's making 3.1 a game. That's great, but he's shooting a lot more threes per game than Dirk ever did. Dirk, in his best year, made still averaged under two makes per game from three. 1.9 was his best year in that regard. So it's a very different ball game. Dirk, for how great he is, he is probably one of the greatest mid-range shooters of all time. He revolutionized the big man, the shooting big man. While he was not the first big man who could shoot, that was always more of a role player, and Dirk instead turned it into someone that could be a franchise cornerstone, an all-time great. So it's it's very different in that regard. And then, of course, you know, Luca being in year two in the NBA, he's 21 years old. We'll see where he ends up for the edge of his career and all that, but longevity has to play into it as well. Dirk, even at 37, was you know in his last few years there even when he was like age 37 he was really really solid still averaging about 15 a game i want to say so it's it's a very different animal now than what it was dirk in this era would if if dirk came up into this era now obviously he would be utilized differently but a lot of bigs and a lot of guys who have kind of replicated tried to replicate what dirk does it's not just the occasional one-footed fadeaways you'll see. A, obviously, Kristaps Porzingis cites Dirk as uh, one of his kind of, I don't know if inspiration is the right word, but definitely one of the guys he kind of modeled a little bit after. But it would be very different if Dirk came up now and was standing on the perimeter spotting up for threes a lot of times. But I don't know. I still look at this and I say, from a raw numbers standpoint, from points per game, assists, rebounds, there's no denying it. Luka is putting out bigger numbers than Dirk ever averaged. From an efficiency standpoint, Dirk plus his numbers remains to me untouchable. Until Luka can show that he can elevate his efficiency, which we talked about how great he is when he gets right around the basket. If he can build that up and actually shoot a a comfortable 37, 38 plus percent from three, then we can have a conversation. Another issue for Luca in his first two years has been free throws. 
He's shooting 75.5%. But really, for a guy like that, you want to be in the, at least the mid-80s. But it's, it's something that, in clutch moments, that's somewhere he has to grow. Dirk, meanwhile, thrived in a lot of clutch moments. Not always. He had his, his share of heartache and rough spots. In his MVP season, for instance, in the elimination game of the first round when the Mavericks were beaten by the We Believe Warriors, the eight-seeded Warriors, uh, Dirk only scored eight points. Now... The Warriors were a horrendous matchup for the Mavericks, and he was literally going against his former coach, Don Nelson, who knew everything he liked to do and implement, and basically did everything and had a, you know good enough, versatile enough defenders and athletes he could throw at Dirk to bother him and keep him off guard. I still contend that had they not matched up with the Warriors in that first round, like had the Warriors not made the playoffs, which they just barely did, that Mavericks team... I think wins the championship that year. That was a dominant Mavericks team that when they played anybody other than Golden State, really, really impressed. Looks like they were hands down the best team in the league. I mean, there was talk at one point before the final maybe 10 to 15 games, there was talk that they could challenge, despite starting something like 0-2 or 0-4 on the year, that they could ultimately challenge that 72-win Bulls team record. Now, obviously they didn't, but I digress. Dirk was the focal point and anchor of that. Luka is the face, focal point, anchor, whatever you want to call it, for this current Mavericks team. But these eras are very difficult to compare. As I said before, Dirk is probably one of the greatest mid-range shooters of all time. His efficiency is off the charts throughout his career, really. And until Luka can elevate to that level and then deliver in big moments... And when I'm talking about big moments, I am talking about playoffs, which, you know, for Dirk, I understand he had a lot of years there where it didn't go right for him. After the 06 collapse in the finals, he had five straight years of, you know, heartache. And they finally got over the hump then in 11. So I guess four straight years of heartache where they only got out of the first round one of those years in the middle and then got bounced easily by the Nuggets in the second round. But... Dirk on the biggest stage did ultimately deliver. He was undeniably for that stretch there of the postseason in 2011. He looked like the best player on the planet. Now, it might have been a fleeting moment where by the start of the next season, he had kind of come back down from the super superstardom he had reached where suddenly he was the undeniable force. But... He still reached that plateau, and while Luka is certainly a top 10 player, uh, I think at this point in the league, and I, especially when you see that he can improve on defense, Dirk at his best defensively was just an okay defender. At his absolute peak defensively, he was okay. Luka, not known for defense, but has shown when he wants to, he can really buckle down and play pretty good defense. So maybe he can keep growing on that side as well. But when you're exerting as much energy as he does on the offensive side, when you're having to create and create so many uh, potential points and opportunities for your teammates like that, you are going to wear down. Because even when, as you saw in the Bucks win the other night, even when Luka himself is not taking a ton of shots, he's still having to fight through contact, drive into the heart of the defense, and kick out to guys. He is expending a lot of energy. So how he can then take that, continue to be great on that side, and then apply it as well on the defensive side, that's, that's the question. That's the mystery. And guys like James Harden, while they are also reasonably competent on defense, Harden, you know, for years, his reputation was that he didn't play any defense. And that's because Harden basically made the executive decision that, hey, I'm only going to try on the offensive end. Why bother on the defensive end? I'll save my energy and dominate on this other side. So I don't, I'm not saying Luca has that mindset per se, but I think it's hard to, it's human nature to kind of disengage a little bit to try and save up just a little bit of energy on the defensive side for the next possession down the other way, especially when you get into the later moments of the game, you want to make sure that you can deliver your best punch rather than worrying so much about defending or whatever. So I digress. Make of it what you will. I just thought this was an interesting discussion. I wanted to dive into it a little bit. I think uh, if Luca can even challenge 
for the 50-40-90 club. And then he has any kind of longevity, particularly obviously with the Mavericks with regard to uh, his franchise mark in that regard, then yes, he has the potential to surpass Dirk. But I think right now what you got to look at it is with the numbers as they are in the efficiency, it's, it's Dirk all the way.